Well, Fred, when I started this podcast, your story was one I really wanted to get. And I'll tell you why. All right. It's about the life we create by the choices we make. And I've been, I've had a front row seat on your life. Yeah, you have, so, I have. <laughs> um, you have. And no the doubt. thing I love about it yeah. is, and this is why I think it's so valuable to people listening and watching, is you're not just an accomplished musician. You, you know, a lot of people, they, they kind of figure out what they can do well, their gifts, their skills, and they go with that. Mm -hmm. And if that lasts your whole life, that's great. But if you, if you hit a, a time when that kind of plays itself out or that season ends, that can be a weird time, for right? Right, it can be. I mean, in my case, I had been doing it for quite a while, and it was kind of an exciting, refreshing change from playing all the time and having to play it for a livelihood uh, to being able to play some, but but really having a business that you had to tend to. And it mm -hmm. was related to the violin helped, you know, the fiddle world. But um, that was a nice change for me to get off the road and get out of the sessions and just get off what I'd been doing for the last 17 or 18 years and just do something different. So Right. That was, and, and just to acquaint everybody with your yeah. story, I mean, you were at some pretty high altitude levels, you know. Uh, I mean, your first solo album is with Mark O'Connor. <laughs> Yeah, Who, if people don't on. know that name, he's, he's how would you describe Mark? He's a phenomenal uh, violinist slash fiddler who's just like an international crossed known. incredible bridges between the two styles and just yeah he's developed a whole method of instruction and yeah he's an amazing artist. Uh, and you were how friend. old when you did this album um, with Mark? I did a fiddle album with he was playing guitar and mandolin that was like nineteen eighty. Gosh, yeah, that was a so yeah, you're so in your early twenties. Twenty two, yeah, twenty. Wow. 22 years old, yeah. And you go from there, uh, you're playing with <clears throat> bluegrass legend Tony Rice, uh, yeah, recording was... with him, yeah, touring yeah. with him, and then, Gosh. just to give you guys an idea, that leads to Amy Lou Harris, it leads to George <laughs> Strait, Ronnie Millsap, Susie Boggess, good... and of course, my fellow West Virginian, Kathy Matea. Absolutely. So it's this incredibly high Bunch level. Of great, great, great artists, very fortunate to be with, you know, have a chance to work with all of them. Um, it was just a, it was a good time, actually. I mean, right now, there are so many talented fiddlers in Nashville. It's tougher. Mm. I mean, when I came, it was 1988. And, you know, there was a lot of good fiddlers in town, but I, but I could hang in there with a good part of them. And so I could get the jobs and the work and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's um, after about five years on the buses, and that was the end of a lot of years of playing all over the place. But, um mm. Five years in Nashville, and really the, the the violin shop thing just sort of happened. 